Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and I'm a little tardy this morning with my video. My daughter graduated from third grade today, moving up from the elementary school to the middle school, and that's reason for celebration, as is Jason freaking Vargas, the best pitcher on the Mets pitching staff, the ace of the rotation, pitches a complete game shutout last night, Writing the ship for the Mets. I want to talk about Vargas's performance. I want to talk about the game last night. And I want to preview today's game uh, at 12.10 in just a few short hours. Being a Mets fan is always a challenge. I, um, I was talking to some friends of mine last night who are Yankees fans and um, just talked about how nice it must be to root for a team that always seems to win and um, you know those challenging moments as Mets fans are rewarding when something like last night happens when out of nowhere Jason Vargas um, really for like the, the the last month continues to be the most consistent pitcher in the Mets starting rotation and he's not doing it by blowing anybody away you know what he's going to throw. Um, he mixes his pitches well. And right now, he is sort of locked in. Um, and, you know, Mickey Calloway's comments after the game were basically, look, this is what we know. We know Vargas can do this when he's when he's right, when he's locked in. And look, so long as he can and shows that he will do this, he's going to get the ball and he's going to throw as many innings as he can. And that's great because if you can start extending the, the, the fifth spot in the rotation – such that Vargas doesn't have to be a five innings at best potential, um, which, I'm, look, I'm not saying we're never going to get back there because he's going to be an up-and-down guy, kind of like Bartolo Colon was, where every now and then he's just going to get shelled, and that's the way it goes. But if you can, you know, four out of five times get Vargas to throw you six to seven innings, even if he's given up four runs, which I don't know that he has the capacity to do. He seems to be all or nothing. I kind of like this whole Mets team, actually. Um, where it's like he's either really good or he's really bad. You know, he doesn't ever seem to settle into that middle ground where he's only giving up three, four, maybe five runs. And at least get, keeping the Mets in the game, giving them a chance to win. But um, last night was uh, was a fun game. It really was. Um, the, the, the Vargas story aside, um, the Mets offense was, was good last night. Um, we had a home run from Conforto, home run from Rosario, a nice three-run homer from Ahmed, and uh, a home run late in the game by Danny Hechevarria, who was in the game um, only because Robinson Cano was not. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yesterday, in my my um, anger-fueled, I, I was doing my best to try to to squelch that anger and not like get like. I don't want to be like that guy who burned the Matt Harvey jersey um, in the in in the trash bin and took his shirt off and went crazy. I, I don't I don't want to be that guy. I want to be even keel. I want to be level, whether it's good or bad. Um, but it, it, I was really angry yesterday, and I missed a couple of things. And one of them was Jeff McNeil's re re return to the lineup. And um, it was great to have McNeil back la uh, two nights ago, but even better last night. He had three hits. Um, inserted right back into the leadoff spot where he belongs, uh, where he can be a catalyst for this offense. Now, I, I might argue that we, we might want to be looking at McNeil as the number two hitter and having Rosario bat in front of him eventually, but until Rosario can consistently show that he can get on base out of the leadoff spot, he can't be the leadoff hitter. McNeil gets on base at a higher clip he needs to be leading off, and I'm okay with that. So McNeil gets inserted back into his regular spot, um, starting on Monday night, and then or Tuesday night rather, and then last night, um, Robinson Cano makes his uh, return from the IL and uh, is inserted right into, in, into his uh, in his second base position on, on the field and batting third in the lineup. I didn't agree with him batting third, I, I, and I, I don't. Um, until he can consistently prove that he can hit, he needs to be batting lower in the lineup. He needs to be batting where he's not going to be grounding into a double play to end an inning where the next inning the leadoff batter Michael Conforto hits a three run uh, hits a solo home run which you know bases were loaded when Cano did his little ground out routine if Conforto's batting instead of Cano in that situation 
Maybe that's a grand slam instead of a solo home run. Of course, it's a different situation. I understand that. But um, I don't like that Cano immediately got inserted right back into the number three hole. It's not as though he were raking when he got injured, right? He, he was, he's been scuffling at best. So he doesn't need to be batting third again. Um, not that it matters, because just a couple of innings after his return, um, he came out of the game with left quad tightness. I don't know if this is going to mean another trip to the IL, um, but I do know for sure that Adani Echeverria came in in his, in his place and made an impact on the game, hit a really long home run, uh, his fourth home run of the season. Um, Gary Cohen made a joke about it last night. He said he... Um, Danny Hechevarria has, I think he said, 28 or 29 home runs in his eight-year or seven or eight-year Major League career, uh, and he has four already this year in like a month with the Mets. So go figure, you know. It's just nuts. Um, but uh, Hechevarria p- uh, played the rest of the game last night. Uh, Cano is a question mark. We don't know what's going to happen with him. Um, as I understand it with the other injuries, it uh, looks like Brandon Nimmo is nearing a potential return. And it also continues to look like Jed Lowry is not. So we are still nowhere near seeing Jed Lowry on the field in a Mets uniform. And don't be surprised when the narrative starts to approach itself uh, in a month or so uh, around the trade deadline where the Mets talk about Jed Lowry as their big trade deadline acquisition. Don't be surprised when we start hearing that. That's an absolute Will Pony thing to, uh, to do. Um, speaking of the trade deadline and the draft, um, of course, the MLB draft is underway. Um, I, I don't pretend to know anything about these kids that get drafted or don't get drafted or when they get drafted. I'm not a draft expert by any means. Um, if you are interested in learning more about who the Mets drafted, I would strongly suggest you pay attention to uh, and, and go out of your way and find the uh, For All You Kids Out There podcast. It's the, quote, Mets Adjacent Baseball Prospectus podcast, and the two hosts um, Jared and Jeffrey are, are really good. They're, they're Mets fans. Um, they do a nice job breaking down the team. But more importantly, this week, I think it was yesterday, actually, their episode dropped. Uh, they reviewed the draft, and it was interesting to hear the way they talked about it. Now, these guys work for BP, so they they do these sorts of analyses. Uh, analyses? analysts, analysms, analysts, whatever. They analyze the draft <laughs> as a job, so they know what they're talking about, and that is what I wanted to get across here. If you want to learn more about the guys the Mets drafted, go check out someone else's podcast. I don't know anything about it. Um, but now that the draft is underway, the reason I brought it up is that the two big free agents, um, uh, Dallas Keuchel and Craig Kimbrell, are now free to sign without the draft pick uh, penalty attached to them. And Craig Kimbrell wasted little time. Yesterday it was announced that uh, Kimbrell was signing a three-year deal with the Chicago Cubs for $45 million. Um, whatever. I, I, you know, honestly, I, I was never a big Kimbrell guy, uh, particularly watching him last year uh, in the playoffs. He just looked like a player who would thrown his best pitches in the past. Um, not unlike our very own Jerry's Familia looks right now. Not to say that Kimbrough can't turn things around. Of course he can, it is possible. But um, he'll be playing for the Cubs for the next, uh, for the rest of this season and the next two after this. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be their closer. I don't know how they're going to handle that situation. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, Kimbrough got his money. He got what he wanted. Um, he's playing on a contender. So good for him. The, uh, the other free agent, of course, was Dallas Keuchel, and the rumors yesterday and the day before were that the Yankees were the number one pick uh, to land Keuchel, because of course they, they were. Um, I've, I've, I've never seen things go better for a team that has been so decimated by injury than I've seen for the 2019 Yankees. It's, it's, it's absurd. But hey, whatever. They're not the Mets. They're lucky. Um... The, speaking of the Mets, the Mets will wrap up their three-game set with the Giants this afternoon. Early game, 12-10 start. Zach Wheeler on the mound for the Mets looking to take the series, which, good Lord, the Mets need to do. They need to win this third game. They cannot mess around with these second-division teams like the Giants. Otherwise, they might as well just consider themselves a second-division team. So the gauntlet's been thrown down. The Mets are not a second-division team. I'm being positive again. They're going to win today, and that's that. Um, after today, the Mets um, the Mets will remain home, 
and I don't even know who the hell they play next. Can you believe that? And I was just about to say it, and I can't remember who they play. Oh, well, they play somebody next. It'll be at City Field, but uh, I will not be here until Monday. I have uh, some time off tomorrow, and I will not be around in the car, so I'll be back to wrap up the weekend series against whom uh, I don't know the Mets are playing, but <laughs> I'll let you know on Monday after it's over. Until then, I thank you for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you're not already doing so. You can follow me there at Mr. Underscore Met. That's M-I-S-T-E-R underscore M-E-T. And as always, let's go. Mets. <laughs>